Okay, boys and girls, campers, folk that turn up, you know, JDOD crowd basically. I'm here on the 30th of December. What on earth are we doing? 30th of December for Christ's sake, PJ. Uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the guys anyway. What are we doing here? Come on, let's talk about it. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, I thought I had written my last blog for the year maybe a week ago or so and I was taking a vacation when this uh, tweet came out today morning from... Uh, our buddy Mike Rixman touting the rapid implementation is a is a big thing for 2012. I don't think it's a big thing for 2012, um, before or after. Um, I just disagree with that that premise that it's a it's a good thing. And I I, I did some background checks with a few more guys that I respect, and uh, they seem to agree with me more uh, than Mike. So maybe that that blog was a was a good reply. Okay, well, let's first of all um, talk about what Mike actually said. I mean, y you read it. Um, he made certain points about, I don't know, what was it? Oh, yeah, CFOs being front and centre. Duh, 2012. Duh, where have they been the last 20 years? So uh, that, anyway, that had nothing to do with the, with the theme of the blog, uh, although that premise itself is quite wrong. CFO, you know, has usually been the CIO's boss, so... Uh, it's nothing new in, in, in 2012. It, it won't change in foreseeable future. So, But that has nothing to do with what he was trying to say anyway. I don't know how it made a, made its way into that piece, but uh, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, the rest of the blog either. He needed a bullet point, mate. He was short of okay. bullet points. <laughs> okay, I, I wouldn't comment on, on, on those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what did you read as being his, his primary... Um, motivation behind this? I think the motivation, um, I wouldn't challenge his motivation on that. The reason being, IT projects do have a tendency to fail and he is trying to find what are the ways of making it more successful. So I think um, in that perspective, he, he is completely right and on point. Where I disagree vehemently is RDS has the solution for that. RDS doesn't make IT projects uh, succeed just by itself. It's just one small part of a, a very complex problem. Why not? Why doesn't it make it succeed? So if, if we look at um, project failures, why do most ERP type or you know enterprise projects fail? They fail because you cannot put a handle on, on scope right up front. So you assume some scope. You put a budget around it and progress projects are progressive in nature. As you go through a project, you will find out more. You have to refine scope and budget. And when we eventually say that projects ran over budget and you know we had to resort to change orders and stuff, what we really mean is that as compared to what we set on the first day of the project, they are they are over budget and they are beyond scope. But that's just the nature of projects. It just happens because you couldn't define scope on the first day. And that's how every project is and it will be. RDS, what does it do? RDS assumes that scope is static and business will not change. Wrong, wrong assumption to begin with, right? Business is the most dynamic thing on the planet. And if anything, in 2012, it will be more dynamic, not less dynamic. So it is kind of hard for me to, to agree to a, a solution that assumes business is going to be static and hence my pre-packaged pre one-size-fits-all solution will be the next big thing. It's it's pretty difficult to, to agree to it in, uh, in logical terms. Ah. Ah, but he did say that it, it would tend to be um, better suited for small pieces of functionality, didn't he? Yes, but even there, um, I would challenge <coughs> on, on that perspective. And the reason I would challenge him is anything that stands alone historically have been more costly over the long term than anything that's integrated. So if you try to put a small piece of functionality in RDS, sure, it's um, the time to market as in it's it's pretty good. So business will see something tomorrow instead of two weeks from now. But then after two weeks, it's not as if they will shut it and go home, right? You still need it to be integrated, supported, and so on. Who does all of that? So the vendor's team comes and does all these things, goes away, some secret sauce. There are all kinds of other integration issues, support issues, <coughs> that have been in this thing forever. Why? I mean, a, a good example is <laughs> Jared. Um, you know him, right? SAP Jared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jared was telling me uh, today on, on Twitter that he thinks if you pay the right consultant, you can probably do the same thing as you do in RDS with the existing solutions, but probably for like 50% of the cost. 
and I don't know about the 50% thing, but at least like for like, I think it will match very well. So, where, 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 where did you get that idea from? Jared did a comparison of uh, the HCM uh, RDA solutions with what is available in standard HCM. Right. And that's the basis for his, uh, for his assertion that he can do it for 50% of the cost. Okay, so basically, what, what is he saying? Is he saying that the HCM RDS solution is 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 over, over complex and requires more work um, than he would necessarily put into it, or that he can find a similar solution that would he can he can better. find a similar solution for less, <coughs> money, which multiplied by whatever is his billing rate, probably right. be less money. I think that's the way I interpreted it. Okay, well, billing rates are always going to have an influence on this, and you know, I mean, if he's only working for sort of like two quid an hour, then I suppose that's fine. <laughs> you sure as hell ain't working on IBM champagne rates, right? Let's put it that way. Or I'd be very surprised, would, would, wouldn't you, BJ? I wouldn't drag IBM into this either. I don't know what the official IBM policy is on these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, let's not go there because this is very much your personal opinion, as we always, as, as we always say. And by the way, while we're on personal opinions, let's just get the disclosures out of the way because you know. One of the things I find with these, uh, this kind of topic is, is that I'm always thinking about, you know, what's, which is why I said motivation, is, is like, well, what's the agenda that we're not seeing behind here? So, for example, you know, um, you know Mike has been part of the RDS team. He has a vested interest, therefore, in, in explaining what that, that's about. Not necessarily promoting, but explaining what's that, what that's about and putting it in a, uh, in a positive light. Um, you and my, my relationship, okay, so... Um, you bought me a dinner at a restaurant in um, Palo Alto. You gave me a ride from the train station. I think I nearly killed you in a car ride in Madrid. But hey, that's our disclosure out the way, right, that dude? <laughs> There's a whole $40 worth of, uh, yeah, bribing happening there. Oh, man. You... $40? Right, okay. I must remember that next time I'm around. Cheap date, mate. That's me. <laughs> But no, seriously though, the, the, the question of motivation I think is always important and um, I, I, I sometimes wonder whether that colours people's opinions to a certain extent. I, I have certain things that I'm very passionate about, there are things that I absolutely believe are right, okay? So for example, I'm a, I'm a huge cloud guy or SaaS guy, whichever way you want to look at it. And, and that's not because any particular vendor is chucking a ton of money in my pocket. Um, but simply because I think that's the way of the future, right? And so then I will talk about that, which brings us back to this thing, because you were said, among other things, well, if RDS can do things um, um, uh, quickly and cheaply, why not SaaS? So come on, BJ, let's get back to that one. Yeah, so if software vendors are hell-bent on making life easier for customers, which is definitely the way they should be thinking, then why stop at RDS? I mean, the natural evolution would be they should be jumping into SaaS. And it is 2012 we are talking about, right? Not 1992. So right. there's no reason why they shouldn't be thinking in terms of SaaS rather than this halfway solution, which is just my way of explaining it, not uh, uh, not, not a standard term. A half-baked solution that... Uh, no, that is, a sta that is a standard solution. That's a, sorry, that is a standard response, man. Come on, what are you on about? We know loads of half-baked uh, solutions. Come on. So uh, what is the point in, in just extending uh, on-premises solutions then, uh, and just repackaging and, you know, it's just existing stuff that you repackage, it could give it a name and say that, okay, I will do it in fixed price. Fixed price projects, it's not nothing new, right? I mean, people have been doing fixed price projects forever. There's nothing new with fixed price. Fixed price goes with this assumption that scope is static. RDS assumes that scope is static, so I would assume that fixed price is the right thing to do for these solutions. It right. has a place, you know, for sure. Somebody is brand new to this vendor, right? A brand new customer who wants to be up and running or a department within um, that wants to be up and running quickly and they go into it eyes wide open that there is an integration cost and a support cost that will come right after this. Then yes, why not, right? But it's not going to be the next big thing, as in it's not as if SIs will go out of business or independent consultants will go out of business or anything like that. It's... I mean, if you come up with some such solution, then that is a big positive disruption and I will stand up and applaud. This, not so much. Right, okay. 
But I mean, you say that in, in the knowledge, don't you, that um, VJ and others have said the same, that um, there is a, uh, a backlog of work that still needs to be done. And this isn't just SAB related, this is Oracle, this is any of the big vendors. I mean, there's a backlog of work that's got to be done. So, very simple example, right? In the next five years, you and I both know that, you know, how many of the Fortune 500 companies will merge and acquire? Many of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If an M&A happens, is RDS a solution for most of the M&A problems? No, for very little, it, it would help, right? Maybe some reporting solutions and so on might go in an RDS fashion. It's a tiny, tiny percentage of the overall solution that is required. Everything else will typically go the way it is, unless somebody comes up with a SaaS-based solution where it's more or less plug and play. Even that is not totally plug and play, but at least more or less plug and play, and that would be a big step forward. This is a baby step forward. At, at the most. Okay, fair enough then, VJ. All right, so we've we've managed to eviscerate that one, haven't we? Anyway, anyway, VJ. Um, hey, listen. Before we just wrap this one up, um, am I not right in thinking that Appleby, uh, uh, Bluefin's got a pretty vested interest in this RDS stuff, so he's he's probably going to pimp the crap out of it, isn't he? Um, uh, it could happen. Uh, I mean, John is his own person and has very strong opinions on on things, which. Um, are at least occasionally divergent from mine. Uh, somebody from Bluefin did uh, did chime in uh, on, on Twitter a few minutes ago, so uh, I would expect John to have a say. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very eagerly waiting for it. I mean, John usually provides a good perspective. I, I may or may not agree with it, and at least 50% of the time I don't agree, but it, he still makes good points and at least would, would open up a good debate. Okay, so, so perhaps the next chapter in this is is, is Appleby slapping you around saying, VJ, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. You know, you live in an ivory tower called IBM. You know, us guys who actually do the real work, you know, we know what this shit's about. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I have no pretensions of knowing as much as John does. So uh, <laughs> I, I would take it if, if he throws it at me. Um, I think no, not really. I will push back, but hey. <laughs> No, no, no. This is. The, I mean, we want plenty of this. Uh, plenty of this, BJ. I mean, there is a serious side to it. I mean, we're having a bit of fun, I guess. But there's a very serious side to this, and that is, is that is, this involves projects. It involves money. It involves business at a time when the economy is is really tough on people. And people need value, and you know, I I would like to think that RDS more generally is going to provide value. But I'm kind of sitting on the fence, and. Um, you're on one side and Mr. K is on the other right at this moment in time. And that's a great place for, 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 for the kickoff of a, a thoughtful discussion, shall we say. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> very thoughtful indeed. Okay then, DJ. Thanks very much indeed. All right. Take care.